Thank you for coming. The first performer we have on stage for you is Ms. Letitia Sylvester. My name is Rachel Kalman, and I will be your host for this evening, so please put your hands together for Ms. Letitia Sylvester. There was a time when peace was on the earth, joy and happiness did reign, cause each man knew his worth in my heart, how I yearn for that. Spirits return, and I cry as time flies. Cause the Creator has a master plan, peace and happiness for every man. The Creator has but one demand, peace and happiness through the land. Yeah, yeah. There was a place. Love forever shine, and the rainbows are the shadows of a love so divine, and the glow of the love lights the heavens above, and it's free, yes, it's free. Can't you see? of applause for Miss Liel Bain and she will be doing for you whispers. I hear a whisper amongst the screaming of pitch vocals of hate, despair, warfare, warfare. I hear a whisper and this whisper is louder than the other voices that seem to haunt mental corridors that seek to lock doors. This whisper is like a stream of consciousness that has engulfed my mouth. It's syncopated flow. It's like that stream of consciousness that has engulfed my mouth, calling waves, tsunamis. This whisper is the ballad that has overtaken the dance hall the gospel that touches the very soul its tune removes scales from eyes that were patched on by a parent scale rhythm and blues can no longer be together because the beat of this whisper is a beating on lies father so now is rhythm and yellows because the presence of this whisper is a sign that the sun is present in fact 
It is so that you can hear this whisper that the sun has risen. Its crescendos makes the major issues in life seem minor. Relegates them to being mere hyperboles. It builds a bridge so you can get a break from the chorus of misery. It sets you free versus the blank, warring stares in your mirror. This whisper whispers in hushed tones. Peace. It says seven is the number of completion and gives you a son and it whispers even when tears cannot provide a justifiable imagery for how much a heart is torn. When the rod seems to do nothing to part red seas, when red seas gushing from the eyes, the soul, the, the soul's mirror sees the day when skin is torn because a crown of thorn, because of a crown of thorns, when hymens are ripped, you whisper, whisper. Can you hear it? Peace, the melody of harmony. Peace, the incessant onomatopoeia. Peace, the omnipresent simile. Peace, the, 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 the sound that eliminates stanzas. Peace, that whispers peace even when you are in pieces. Peace, that whispers hope in spite of peace. The source of resilience. Peace. The, generation, the genesis and revelation of which is found in the Prince of Peace. Amongst the screaming or fish vocals of hate, war, fear, war, fear, despair, I hear a whisper. I met him recently, actually, and he is very skilled on the guitar. I would like you to give a warm welcome to Mr. Gregory Panton.
Now is the Exodus. And no man, no woman care about no man, no woman, only about their master plan to get to the promised land. Now is a 5.20 p.m. Exodus. From a stretch where time is told by its toll on the skin or their proximity to the heartless of the darkness, there's a strong shared desperation here. For minutes and stands still hours pass idle bodies by and sunlight is the thin line between living or dying before even arriving at your promised land. And I stand amidst the herd. I stand still amidst the herd. I stand still and timid amidst a herd of creatures, the likes of which I have never seen in any habitat. Maybe I am just unused to the nomadic process. I could not have lived as long in this stink and mindlessness and pressure. Here men bathe in the filth of their neighbors as loved ones watch on with well-worn grimace and sit amongst the dying grass in droves at the end game waiting for something spectacular like someone's last breath maybe even their own the city lives at the end of grog and cigarette butts and smells like expiry and feels heavy on your shoulders inhaling the exhalation of an old man makes old men and I only enter this city now and then and even I could feel the anxiety attached to leaving. Every new day is a new resignation of entrapment and the creeping night air brings with it a long whispered lie of freedom. Because the sun will rise and this will still be the place where the powerless hunt for food and the powerful fight for slaves. The stories here don't exist anymore. This is a long way away from the stories we wrote in the sand here and now the stories are written in a stone casting around the writers every new day brings with it a long whispered lie of why i don't even know anymore and now is the exodus after the revelation that we either sit at the foot of Megiddo or swim in Gehenna and a long way away from those stories we wrote in the sand here. Now the stories are casting a stone, casting around the writers. The slaves spout talk of freedom in some sense signed to saviors. Dancing with their drinks and their women and the illusions of their own two feet while the wise know the war is every day against themselves and that they'll never win unless they've already lost and that today is a revelation and every new day is an exodus after a revelation and as the beginning of yet another. Thanks.
It don't matter. Ball head, Yamulka or Kufi, Catholic or Hindu or Sufi, all that matters is the fitra. You don't know, my Dean, rich in the water and breath and fire and earth, Pentecost is her embrace. Persuade me to preach my love in tongues. My pastors are rappers or writers. My missionaries are the guys with the history books or Hemingway or maybe Hennessy. I don't care if you say grace, just take a moment to love something more than yourself before you chew. Because right view is knowing you will never be perfect, but loving perfect enough. It is the scenery in your lover's eye. Right resolve is striving to be the boy your best friend can trust to come over at eight, or answer the phone at 11 when all he can do is cry. It's never asking why the tears fall or critiquing the eye that lets them out but catching the drops. Right speech is I love you. Right after the girl wishes that you die, the nastiest of curses are flying. It is to preach over cipher beat. Missionary minister corner preacher of the end is not near. It is neither here nor there. If God is love, then share more God and we'll have nothing else to fear. Right action is not putting down the knife or the gun, but raising up love, the mother of progress son. Right livelihood is not selling snake oil. Whether starvation to the hungry or seconds to the obese or shell casings to the struggling youth man or false love to the hopeless romantic. Right effort is slaving over the pen or over the textbook or over the scripture or over the lover. Mindful, never ignorant, never out of body, never without those who matter in your heart. To know. To touch the bits of creation left on the lips of creation. To hold star stuff close and never let go when it burns. Because please God, I don't believe it. You touch me once, I can feel it. Ain't no way that I'd ever leave it. We can float way up to the ceiling. They can't hold me down. They can't hold me. Because this light makes light work of my struggle. Makes light of my struggle, makes me light. This hydrogen carbon Pentecost fire embrace. Made of God love. This Mahamudra. 
persuades me to preach my love in tongues. Love and light.
she is a child educator and she also deals in drama, drama and other forms of art. Please give a warm welcome to Miss Theodora Ulrey. I want to give Oli a piece of history because everybody in this room know about who I'm going to talk. His name is Anansi. Everybody know Anansi's story. But how many people know where he came from? And how these stories came to the earth? Well, Auntie Tia going to tell all you how these stories came to the earth. Before I start though, I want to give you a little chat. Listen to my story, listen to my song. Listen to the sound and the rhythm of the drum. I want all of you to help me here, right? Let me do a little rehearsal. Listen to the story, listen to the song. Listen to the song, the rhythm of the drum. Now, when I say the rhythm, you will say the rhythm, okay? I wish all of you were closer, but I wouldn't ask you to come. Right, here we go. Listen to my story, listen to my song. Listen to the sound and the rhythm of the drum. The rhythm. The rhythm. The rhythm. The rhythm of the drum. I say the rhythm. The rhythm. The rhythm. The rhythm. The rhythm of the drum. And if you listen, you're going to learn. Yes, if you listen, you're going to learn. But we have to learn to listen. So learn to listen and listen and learn. And if you learn, you're going to earn. Tell it or not. You will never be barren or fruitless. You will always prosper. Well, I want to tell all you how Anansi come down. Let me tell you. Anansi came from the Ashanti of Ghana in West Africa. And in this, the international year for people of African descent, I think it's a good story to tell all you. And this is a story that will help children and adults and everybody to become agents of change, which is the theme of this evening's proceedings. All right, here you there was a time when there were no stories to tell. No stories at all. Well, boy, Auntie Tia would have starved. But anyway, all these stories belong to Miami. And he was the god of the sky. Well, Kua Kua Nancy, the spider man, they say he was a spider god. He wanted to buy these sky god stories. What do you think he do? Well, he was a spider. So he spin a web up to the sky. Now I want all you to remember something. Anansi was the very first superhero. So that man, Spider-Man, he's a fake. Tell all you to me, please. So he spin a web up to the sky. He didn't have, to have no gadget. He just do so, whoom, and he reached the sky. And he go on before Niamh and say, oh, Niamh, I would like to buy a box of stories. Well, Niamh started to laugh. He said, you want to buy my stories? Well, if you want to buy my stories, you have to pay the price. And the price of my stories is that you have to bring me, oh, Sebo, the leopard of the terrible teeth. You have to bring me, Emboro, the hornets who sting like fire. And you have to bring me, Moatia, the fairy no whom no man has ever seen. Well, Anansi say, I will gladly pay the price. Well, Niamh start to laugh again. He say, how can a weak man like you, you are so small, how can you pay my price? But Anansi answer, you know, he just went down to the earth to find the things that his sky god wanted. If all he was listening, all you remember, a leopard, some hornets, and a fairy. So he walked in through the jungle part. When he came upon a sable, the leopard, the leopard, the leopard said, uh -huh, Nancy, you just in time to be my lunch. He said, uh -huh. well, all right. Here what? You could eat me. That's okay. But before you eat me, I want to play a game with you. You want to play? He said, what game is left? He said, well, I'm going to tie you by your foot on your foot. And then you're going to untie me. And then it will be your turn to tie me. You want to play Osebo? Now, Osebo loves games. And he was planning to eat an Nancy when it was his turn. 
He said, yes, I want to play. And and see, tied those sabre by his foot. By his foot. By his foot, eh? By his foot, by his foot. And he hung him in a tree. He said, uh-huh, oh, sabre, you're ready to meet this guy. God, you're ready. He started mocking. Oh, sabre, so good, and then she's a nasty liar. You tell me, he said, never mind. And he gone, swing. He gone now looking for the hornets. Now, Ashanti people know. I know all they're supposed to know. Modi, Modupeno and all these people here are supposed to know if you want to do something good, you have to have a plan. So he planned. He cut a leaf from a banana tree and he pulled a calabash with water and he gone creeping up to the nest of Emboro and he sprinkled some of the water. He said, Emboro, <laughs> it is raining. You want to come inside my calabash? No, if you come inside my calabash, the rain will not match up your wings. So Osebo gone inside his calabash. Man, and Nancy stopped the motor, the calabash. And that was it for Osebo. He said, Osebo, Embro, <laughs> you're ready to meet this guy. God. But they gone. He tied them up next to the leopard. So he gone swing. Anybody remember what he had to find? Oh, they're listening. Very good. Well, well done. So he gone now looking for the fairy. Now, everybody know. By now. All they know. Modupe, they don't know already. I know, and them fellas in the back, they know. If you want to do something good, you have to have a... Right. So, he gone now looking for the fairy. Now, he know the fairy does dance under the flamboyant tree at midnight. He also knows she loves she love yams. Now, if you want to catch somebody, you get to know what they like and give it to them. Anyway, so, he gone now, and he make a plan. He cut a wooden doll, and he covered over with sticky gum. He pull a bowl with yam, he pong the yam, and he put it in the bowl. He tie a string around the doll's neck, and he waiting for Madame Watia when she come at midnight to dance under the flamboyant tree, and this is how she's singing. Now she's singing a song she learned from Miriam Akiba on one of her trips to the future, and hear how she's singing it. <laughs> you laugh, she can't, she do. Pull it, pull it, dance eh? because I have the mic in my hand, but I'll try. Pole pole mse, pole pole mse, pole pole mse, a fufumwa. Kenya tale tata Kenya, Kenya tale tata Kenya, Kenya tale tata Kenya, a fufumwa. Ay mama, pole pole mse, pole pole. Why? As she do so, and she see the yam, she love yam, and she's a greedy fairy. She said, come baby, <laughs> can I have some of your yams? So Anansi, only remember, Anansi behind the tree, and he made the dolly neck kind of shiggly, wiggly, wiggly, and he <laughs> have a string around the dolly neck, and he pulled the string, and the dolly seemed to nod. No, he also knows she have a bad temper. So she had all the yams, and when she was finished, she said, Thank you, come baby. Well, Nancy didn't pull the string, so Dolly didn't answer, and she got real vexed. She said, come baby, I'm what the fairy who no man has ever seen. I am thanking you, and you do not answer me. If you do not answer me, I am going to slap you in your crying place. That's what the Shanti say. The tears fall in the crying place. I'll slap you in your crying place. No answer. She slapped the gum. She's shipping, huh? She slapped the gum, baby. Whack. What happened? Hand got stuck. This smart. Next hand, she said, yeah, let go of my hand. And if you do not let go of my hand, I am going to slap you again. Whack. Next hand. Foot. And there she was, all stuck. And who came out from behind the tree? Right. And he took her and he tied her around the other three. And then he had to fulfill his mission. So he spin a web. Oh! Up to the sky, and he went before Nyami, and he said, "Oh Nyami, I have brought you the things you demanded. Oh Sebo, the leopard of the terrible teeth, and Boro, the hornets who sting like fire, and Mwatia, the fairy who no man has ever seen. Can I have a box of stories now?" <laughs> and Nyami was amazed because nobody had ever done it before. Anybody, you know, maybe, maybe anybody who tried. The leopard could have had them for supper, or lunch, or dinner, or maybe the hornets could have stung them to death, or maybe the fairy could have turned them into a frog or something. Nobody ever saw them again, and that was it. But here is this little man, Anansi. So 
he decided that he would call a decree that they would have a three-day festival and a thank you and a beautiful song and dance and food and everything was nice and they had a feast in the heavens and then at the end of it they gave they had a handing over ceremony and all the counselors called and he said come come Kwaku and Ansi has brought me the things I demanded and he now will be proclaimed the owner of the stories and from this day and henceforth all these stories will be known as Anansi stories or spider stories and they will belong to Kwaku and Ansi and they had a big handing over ceremony and they gave, he handed the stories to Kwaku and Ansi and Anansi bowed very low and he said, thank you very much. And he went back down to the earth. And when Anansi went back down to the earth, he opened the box of stories and all the stories flew out of the box to every corner of the earth, including Napa here with Sinergia. And that is how Anansi, Tia, get the story to tell all you. So I'm going to send a story for all you, catch a story and tell it to your children. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next on stage, I would like to re-invite Miss Letitia Sylvester, and she will be serenading you once again, Miss Letitia Sylvester. You all feeling good? Yes. I'm feeling real good. <laughs> so, you feeling cold? <laughs> Take some warmth here. <laughs> Just going to share this song with you. Hope by at the end of it, those of you who are not feeling good, going to feel good. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. For me, I'm feeling good. Oh. Fish in the sea. Now, saying I'm feeling good. 
It's the new time.